Dr. George Matsumoto, I welcome you uh, in our Sofia studio. Uh, we are uh, trying to uh, organize uh, some uh, programs uh, for diffusion of uh, basic uh, knowledge on uh, ocean literacy and good examples that uh, are available around the world. And uh, you kindly uh, agreed to share your experience and your views with us. And uh, I would uh, like to, to ask first, uh, you work in the Monterey Bay Aquarium uh, Research Institute, uh, in short, the M MBARI, I don't know if... Uh, That's correct, that. yes. And, uh, what is MBARI? Uh, where uh, is it seated? And so the Monterey Bay Aquarium Research Institute is in a small town called Moss Landing. Mm -hmm. It's about 120 kilometers south of San Francisco. Uh, mm -hmm. It's a beautiful little fishing town, mm -hmm. and the Research Institute is a small organization. We have about 200 people, 220 mm -hmm. people, and we started in 1987, mm -hmm. and we combined science and engineering to mm -hmm. try to learn more about the ocean and address problems that nobody else can. And we could do that because our scientists and engineers can come up with solutions to problems that other people can't because they don't have the benefit of having the scientists and engineers work so closely together. Yeah, together. And the, uh, that sounds uh, extremely logical and nice, but uh, you make it happen in a place that has also a marine tradition with fishermen. That's correct. In fact, you are uh, respecting the, the past and the culture of the sea, uh, and you are uh, also uh, bridging the gap between uh, two different activities uh, so in order to build the future. Yes, so, and, and Monterey, mm -hmm. Monterey Bay, in fact, the whole California coast is home to many marine protected areas. Yeah. And so the citizens are very aware of mm -hmm. the ocean and how it should be protected. Mm -hmm. And we also work very closely with our partner organization, the Monterey Bay Aquarium, which is in Monterey itself. Mm -hmm. And that is a beautiful world-class aquarium. Uh, that shows the public all about the wonders of the ocean. And they have over two million visitors a year. It's important, very important. Yeah. And uh, it's, uh, in a way, an uh, uh, opportunity for people uh, living in cities to see below the waves without exactly. getting their feet wet. Exactly. Yeah, it's amazing. Yes. Yeah. Uh, and um, the, the mission of Mbari, you have already put some, uh, some, some views on that. Uh, and uh, you have um, a very important uh, attitude towards uh, public outreach. Uh, how, how do you involve the people? Uh, you, you have put working together scientists and engineers, but right. how do you uh, put forward uh, the work uh, you are doing and the things that come out from that that's, work? That's an excellent question. Because mm -hmm. we are primarily a research organization, mm -hmm. uh, the outreach that we do is a large part with our sister organization, the Monterey Bay Aquarium. Mm -hmm. And so they have an exhibit that talks about the work that we do. And they help us with our media. They help us with our social media. Uh, but the Research Institute, MBARI, also has social media. And so we have a YouTube channel. Uh, if you search for the Monterey Bay Aquarium Research mm -hmm. Institute on YouTube, we try to put out a new video uh, every month. We use Twitter, we use Facebook, uh, we try to use a Instagram now, so we try to use a variety of different tools. We also have a very nice web page, uh, so we're on the World Wide Web and we're changing our web page right now, so it's sort of in transition. We want to make it more user-friendly. Uh, and then some programs I run, I run programs for teachers, for our educators, to try to teach them how to use the data that we're collecting. And we also run a student internship program. So if any of your, if any of the people that you work with have students who are uh, at university mm -hmm. uh, getting a uh, bachelor's degree or a master's degree or a PhD degree, they could come and work with us for 10 weeks in the summer. Okay, thank you very much. I was uh, just about to ask, yes. when did you organize those uh, those internships. So the uh, internships, mm -hmm. they run June, July, and August. It's yeah. 10 weeks. Uh, we start advertising in November and we let people know by March. Yeah. Okay, it's perfect. And the, it's the time of the year, the weather is finest and people... Yes, it's very uh, nice and, and it is open to international students. We're mm -hmm. one of the few organizations in the United States that will accept international students. 
No, that sounds also amazing because uh, uh, and, uh, a country that is uh, present everywhere uh, should, in, in fact, accept uh, some kind of internships for scientific purposes. It would, it would be ideal, and, and the reason we could do it is because we're privately funded. So we're yeah. not, we don't have the money for our existence coming from the government. So most of our funding comes directly from another nonprofit, uh, the David and Lucille Packard Foundation. And David Packard was our founder. He's the one who started us in 1987. And David Packard was also the person who started Hewlett Packard. Yeah, HP uh, computers, yeah, right? everywhere. Okay. So when David and his wife mm -hmm. Lucille passed away, they started up a nonprofit research, a uh, nonprofit mm -hmm. foundation, the David and Lucille Packard Foundation, and we go to them every year and we ask them for our money. Yeah, it's our it, budget. It, yeah, it, it's wise to do so. I was just uh, going to to ask the, this issue. You anticipated my yes. my question, and <laughs> thank you for that. <laughs> yeah, so, so our annual budget, because it's a question yeah. we get a lot. Our <laughs> annual budget is somewhere between yeah. uh, thirty-five and forty million dollars a year. Yeah, but more than the the, the, the finance uh, mm -hmm. properly, you know what you are doing and what you need for that. It and that's happen. and that's the big benefit of having yeah. private foundation yes. funding is we get to decide our own priorities. We yes. get to decide the projects we want to work on, uh, what yeah. we want to do, our own timeline, who yeah. gets to work on which projects, that's all our own decisions okay. and nobody else's. And that is very important to be able to interact with the public and uh, relate to the, uh, the public demand and also Absolutely. build the public demand. Or because the ocean yeah. is unpredictable, of course. if anything of course. ever happens, we could turn around mm -hmm. and say, well, let's go study that. Um, because we can do that. We don't have to write a proposal and wait a yeah. year for it to get funded before we could go do our research. Yeah. And eventually get uh, That's no right. for an answer. So, so we could, if something happened and we want to go do mm -hmm. research, like the unfortunate Deep Horizon no, accident that happened a few years ago, we were able to, we were there within two weeks. Yeah. And, and we were ready to start doing some research. Yeah, I know lots of people working in uh, governmental agencies. Yes. The, 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 they are always uh, stuck with filling forms filling and forms. with asking money that sometimes comes uh, in slow uh, mm -hmm. quantity, uh, other times comes uh, very late mm -hmm. and eventually never comes. Yes. And so fortunately you are uh, free from those constraints. So, uh, I wish you the best of luck with your excellent work and uh, I would like in the name of Sofia to, um, uh, uh, to say how much we appreciate your presence here and your input. Absolutely. This is a very important concept. Yeah. Uh, we're in the United States right now, we're trying to make sure that everybody understands that there's only one ocean. Yeah. Everybody talks about all the different ocean, Atlantic Ocean, Pacific Ocean, mm. Indian Ocean, but there's only one ocean. Mm. This ocean connects all of us. Yeah. And so the more we could work together, the better. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.